السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, the beginning I'd like clearly to convey the apology of His Excellency Dr. Khalid bin Salih Sultan for just a few days he was planning to be here in this conference but due to major commitments and have to change his schedule and I'm presenting the paper on his behalf. Uh, in, in this presentation, we'll be looking into, first of all, a general issue of higher education as well as an excellence, and then we'll be closing by a case study of King Fahad University of Petroleum and Mineral. Now, if we really we look into the title of this meeting, is Higher Education Excellence. Now, if we did ask the participant in this uh, conference to define what do you mean by higher education excellence, I'm sure we're going to get so many different views, so many different opinions. So we're not going to have a unified, really, definition. Uh, nevertheless, we're talking about excellence in general. So what I'm trying during my presentation to go into some of this issue, as well as going to look into the way we are going to measure it, as well as how we can improve it in general before we move into the case history of King Fahad University. Now, it is a fact that uh, everybody recognizes that higher education really creates a demanding, but meanwhile, it is a rewarding environment in which individuals can generalize both their creative as well as intellectual potential. Now, the pressure in higher education is not just really to provide real people with the knowledge. The knowledge now, there is a pressure also to provide them with the skill and value to play really a major role, not just in academic life, as well as in real our social role in general. Now, higher education as well really provide through research, as well as a production of knowledge, provide society with capacity to innovate, as well as to adapt and advance in general. Now, already we have seen from yesterday's presentation and this morning now, there is very high correlation in general between excellence in higher education as well as the overall national achievement of the country, the development in growth and competitiveness as well as in welfare in general. Now, just the example of the country of South Korea as well as really Finland and really the major reform taking place in higher education is really a great example of this. Now, during my presentation, I'm going really to speak excellence and quality almost going to have really the same meaning. I'm going to start really here by really four uh, conventional views of excellence in collegiate quality, and this can be defined as excellence, as excellence as resources, excellence as a reputation, excellence as a content, as well as excellence as an outcome. Now, after looking at the limitation of all these four components, now I'm going to come out with really here some definition of excellence in higher education. We can't define the institute as being excellent if really going to have a greatest impact or add the most value on the following. On the student knowledge, as well as in personal development, as well as on the faculty member scholarly, as well as pedagogical ability and productivity. It is very clear this definition is really focused on the result. What really difference is going to make in the student and knowledge, skill, as well as attitude? Now, one of the latest definition actually is being uh, uh, published in the literature about quality in higher education. Uh, quality is really conformous to mission specification as well as goal achievement. Now, this is going to be within accepted standard of accountability as well as integrity. Now, this can be achieved, this, uh, the characteristic of excellence can be achieved through the following board according to that definition. Mission appropriate to higher education will define appropriate goal and establish condition and procedure to achieve both of them, as well as assessment of both institutional effectiveness and student learning outcome, as well as substantial accomplishment of mission and goal. The support needed to continue to accomplish both of them and meeting the eligibility requirement and standard of accredited body in general. Now, just based on this uh, short introduction, it's very clear here that in order to measure excellence or quality in general, we cannot really measure it by just one single data point. There are several 
uh, point and several indicators should be used to measure excellence in higher education. Now, here there is some example of those indicators that really should be used to measure uh, excellence in higher education. Be reviewed as expressed in accreditation and program review, student and alumni opinion and satisfaction indices, uh, reputation and ranking studies, student performance profile on entrance as with well an exit test, professional licensure result, and faculty research and production uh, and publication productivity. Now, it's clear one of them just taking by itself is not going to be really su su uh, sufficient to indicate quality or excellence in general. Now, just the way really we execute this through different point, I'm go just going to go into some of them here. Now, accreditation. Accreditation, which is the test of goal achievement and improvement. Just each one of them, I have just brief information. But in general, when you look into accreditation, maybe the most used and respected form of quality assurance in higher education by all different people, parent, really administrator, faculty member, as well as really employer is really accreditation. Now itself, lately, it does go through a major shift where initially in the past, it was really very much the concern on the process orientation, and now the focus is very much on result and the performance orientation. Now, uh, Looking into the other issue, which is ranking and rating. Now, I'm really glad our uh, speaker just before me go into this issue, and because it's considered the test of reputation, which is all institute in general uh, try to look into because of the perception and the reality of the quality, and uh, to earn the ranking. So much really shared lately about the Shanghai ranking and to be within the 500 institute. Uh, now, just here is just uh, a summary of uh, some of the three different ranking body. My earlier speaker did go into the detail of Shanghai as well as the Times, uh, which is really global in general. I'm just adding also here the US News, which is doing the ranking for the undergraduate program in the United States. Uh, as we see here, just looking into them in general, uh, there is uh, very much in the time and use news the focus on peer assessment and peer reviews. And uh, there is, uh, in the US news, there is focus on retention, faculty resources, how much really spent on the student uh, in teaching in general as financial resources, as well as really the interest qualification of the student that is uh, look at the student selectivity. Now, looking into Shanghai, as I mentioned, the earlier speaker go into detail of this. However, if you look into all different points coming into this category, really all of them really focusing very much on research. Uh, it's been indicated by Professor Shaw that even there is a limitation in research, but what about the other component of really higher education, about teaching and learning? is almost really missing here in, in this uh, component. So can we use just the rating uh, in general, or the ranking in general, as really an indication of quality of higher education, definitely cannot use by itself. It has to be combined with other indicator. Now, the other really source of information really is an outcome, and that is the test of result. So just a brief information of this. Now, so much really focus nowadays on really on the outcome. Uh, not really focus on the program itself, but what are you going to achieve as the result of our education is very much really looking into the knowledge, the skill, as well as institute and in value in general. Now, there are so many ways this outcome now that uh, is being measured, either through exit survey, through the survey from the alumni or from the employer in general. There are so many tests now, even now, available in the literature to test the outcome knowledge of the student as well as skill in general. As a matter of fact, now most of accrediting body now, they are requiring now an exit exam to be developed at the institute to measure the quality of outcome as a direct measure and not just rely on the indirect as just survey and an opinion in general. Now, this is just also some an additional 
information that need be to be provided in order to assure the quality and the excellence of the institute, like licensure, for example, the test of professional standard, program uh, reviews, it is the test of peer review, the follow-up study, the test of client satisfaction, and finally, the total quality management, which is the test of continuous improvement. I don't have time to go into each one of them, but in general, these are the components which need to be fulfilled, need to look into all in general, in order we can say that is really achieve the quality or the excellence of the higher education. Uh, uh, just as in starting, an institute can go into what is called an initial checklist. This is a suggestion by uh, already available in the literature through the Malcolm uh, Baldridge uh, framework. It is one of the assessment tools is available in the literature. It uh, really provides an initial indication, and it is based on seven dimension uh, for uh, really uh, reviewing the function in general of higher education. These seven dimensions are the leadership, strategic planning, external focus, information and analysis, as well as faculty and staff, workplace focus, process effectiveness, and outcome and achievement. Under each one of those, there are a certain point need to be achieved, and for each point, there is a certain score, so you have to get the total score. Uh, this can be applied for a department, for the college, or for institute in general. So that is really just an offer all for you, I thought really at the beginning, to go into uh, the excellence in higher education in general. Now I'm going to move into the case study of King Fahad University of Petroleum Admiral. The university has been established in the 1963, is almost 40 years now in business. It's mainly very much a technical uh, university, engineering, science program, as well as computer and industrial management. Uh, we have both undergraduate and graduate program, both uh, a master and a PhD in so many different areas. Now, one of the main really feature of our program is what we call the Brebeer program. Our program is really five years. The student, when join the university, it has to go at the beginning through the prepare because we believe the students coming from general education, they are not really ready to go into school education, so we are preparing them in this regard. So what we have in this program, in the prepare, it's an extensive English courses. We provide students as well as with the math and the physical science, uh, the basic science in general, and also now we are focusing on providing the student with the study skill and the computer skill, which I'm going to talk about it later in detail about student uh, program. Uh, now, as well as we are very much focusing on to achieving the quality through program assessment, that's through accreditation in general, uh, just to go into the historical uh, uh, of this at the university, history of the university in this regard. Well, uh, all our engineering program has been accredited by the EBIT in the 1993, and uh, all our College of Sciences, uh, all different departments, there is no external body usually do the accreditation, so we did invite a team from the University of Berkeley to our university, we did really assess all department in the College of Science. I'm glad Dr. Zahro Najjar at that time, he was really a professor of the Air Science Department when that exercise has been taken place. Uh, our research institute, which consists of different centers that serving the community, also it has been uh, assessed by a group of team invited from the UNESCO. The second visit by Abit to our university in the 2001, and uh, again a substantially equivalent statement was given to all our engineering department in general. And maybe we are one of the first institutes in the region that we start really and we achieve the accreditation in our college of industrial management through the AACSB. Uh, then after that, we saw that is not really sufficient for the quality. We need to look into the continuous self-improvement. That's why we go into the self-assessment process, uh, process into our program. We started a pilot this for our seven program in the year 2003. Then all remaining academic program at the university completed this cycle. 
Now, so talking about the self-assessment, uh, the university uh, developed lately the self-assessment process through a certain rigorous guideline in order to ensure that enhanced student learning outcome provide feedback for quality assurance of academic program and really continuous improvement as well as really to be a preparation for national as well as international accreditation. In particular now on the outcome based now accreditation, you have to have within your institute a continuous assessment process. So uh, this has been uh, developed just briefly. There are certain criteria with a number of standard as an input. Now, uh, this is, is going to be evaluated and then to look into the major outcome in general. Currently, we are measuring the outcome based on exit survey, based on the survey from the employer, as well as from the alumni, and we are in the process of developing an exit even before it's being complete. Uh, therefore, we followed an approach that is very much based on the project uh, man management type, and uh, uh, just I need to focus on this part of it here. In our plan, we come out with a 24 project, which has been distributed over uh, two years. And for each project, as well as our mission, vision, and value, there is a certain uh, indicator and there are certain measures being specified which are going to be reviewed from certain time to achieve the certain target and continue the review process. Uh, this is just some of our uh, strategic goal in general uh, in order to achieve excellence in education, in research, as well as to achieve really a reputation and standing, uh, uh, to achieve university standing as well as reputation in general and the university to have a competitive edge as well as serving the current uh, community. This is just uh, some of the way our strategic constant has been uh, Develop, which is end with a number of project has been specified. I'm just going to show this slide, which show the time schedule of our different project. As I mentioned, 24 project, it will be executed during the first two years of the plan. Uh, the shaded one will be started in the first year. Uh, I don't know if that is really very much uh, readable in this slide. Like just to see in the first one, we are working very much on recruiting, development, and retaining of a faculty member, then diversify source of funding. We have a really certain project to concern about entrepreneurship for student and value added program. 12 of this project already been started halfway. It will be completed by next February. After the project being completed, it will be executed by relevant department, and then the second cycle of project will be started. The whole duration of the plan is really five years. Uh, as a matter of fact, our university has been honored lately that to administrate the development of uh, uh, higher education, to develop a strategic plan for higher education in general for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is what we call a FAC project, if you heard about it. It's already started by August 2005, and hopefully it will be completed by July 2006. We are almost then halfway in this project. Now, for whenever you have a strategic plan, you need to have a certain performance measure and indicator. I'm just showing here uh, in general. Uh, now, in order to achieve our mission, vision, as well as a different uh, working process, financial and learning and development, there are certain outcome need to be achieved. For each outcome, there are certain measure we need to specify. And then the method we are going to calculate it as well as the indicator which we are going to have. This is being done for the different area in teaching and learning. It's been done as well as for research, for community services, as well as there are some general measure in general. Okay? This is just uh, some uh, target and some uh, 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 key measure is being specified by our university and the current situation we have. Now, one of our strongest program that we started early is really our faculty development. Now, uh, we started lately a strong program for our faculty development that to assure that faculty members retain their highest potential in teaching and research, improve student learning at KFUBM, as well as to be component program. Our program really consists of two components of development in teaching as well as in research. 
Now, for the new faculty member who just joined the university, now, when joining this program, it is an optional program, but they have to go into all component. They cannot be selective. The reason for that, this program, it contains certain incentive. There's a certain grant is being provided to faculty member. There is certain summer assignment in which uh, also financial support is being provided to do their own research, to develop themselves, as well as we develop them in teaching. Like, for example, just in the last three years, we have offered 100 workshop in teaching and learning to improve their skill in this regard. So I just go quickly over this now. Now, I would like to forget also e-learning. Now, our university focusing on technology in general, uh, where we have, well, uh, sorry. Is there some problem with the mouse? Okay, so this e-learning in general here, all real infrastructure for providing e-learning is really available. We have wireless network, almost uh, laptop has been available to uh, provide it to every faculty member. We have 100% our, our classroom, they are smart now. We're providing template for really authoring. We're providing a grant for a faculty member to develop online courses, as well as we really, we're providing them with a certain uh, uh, training in that in general. So according to that, we have seen just lately, 70% of our graduate courses using uh, the web in general through the web city, as well as we have about 42 online courses, almost developed fully online. Uh, just to show some of the program we go into for the training, of our faculty member in order to engage heavily in this process. Some of really the grow in using the uh, web city with interacting with students and providing them with some of the content. Now I need just to go clearly into this student program which I talked about uh, before. Now also we have some student allocated for uh, program allocated for student, personal skill program, as well as gifted student. Now, just looking into this, uh, as we have seen here, most of our graduates, usually they don't have a problem in the technical component uh, in general. So we are trying to achieve the outer edge of the circle, which almost students, they achieve the technical part. However, when we look into the skill, lifelong learning, the critical thinking, the communication skill, the entrepreneurship, there is a lack, there is shortages in this regard. Therefore, this program, it has been developed. Now, the component of this program, large number of events, short courses, workshop organized for students in this area. We provide the student with the support to really get the international computer driving license. We provide financial support, training for them. Uh, already all students in our brief starting directly a role in this program. Uh, quite a number of them already completed even before finish the brief our target, at least the student before graduation, they have to achieve this driving lesson. We are trying to also to improve the skill of students through certain voluntary, voluntary uh, community services to our uh, area, as well as we are working now heavily to infuse this skill into our academic program. Now, some of the initiatives in this regard, which already taken place is now, there are study skill courses in the Brebeer, the, all our English courses very much really focus on skill communication and the working as a team. Uh, there are special communication skill also courses to our students, as well as we're trying to train all our faculty members in all other courses try to improve those skills in our student. This already we have a model, it's been developed and already start its execution from the beginning of this academic year. Uh, now we have another program here with the gifted student. Uh, uh, this is just the criteria how the gifted student is being selected and how really we're going to work on them in order to really improve their skill in general. Uh, just I need to close by this one. Uh, just one of the latest initiative at the university, what we call Dahran Technofali. Uh, this is the main really idea of this is to increase the interaction between the university and the industry, just some of the entities that really belong to this, uh, what we call the Hrantik Nufali. We have the King Abdullah uh, Science Park. 
Now, already we have one of the research center been established in this science park. Now, Sharon Berger is really established the first center. As we know, they only have four centers in the world. Now, one in the state, one in UK, one in the University of Moscow, in Russia, and just the fourth one in the in Dahran. Uh, this uh, also, Dahran Technofali, consists of a business incubator, liaison office to interact in general with industry, as we are, we are constructing now consulting services for really small consulting work with the industry, because major work is going through our research institute, innovation center, just being established. Now, also there is what we call Sultan bin Abdelaziz Science and Technology Center, which already been completed and been allocated for the university for its operation. Uh, now I have just some uh, benchmarking in general for our uh, university. Uh, I'll just go into some example of them here. The, just some benchmarking in uh, number of uh, referee publication in general. You see the university when it's being really located with some of the institute. Those institute has been selected because really we find complete information about them and we do intensive benchmarking with them. I should say here also here, in addition to that, our engineering uh, program, if we don't appear as one of the 500 institutes in Shanghai, but our engineering program, because we are very much a technical university, it's appear on one of the top 100 university in the Institute of Science Citation. So I'll just uh, close by concluding remark in general. I leave it for you to look into it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.